Hi, my name is Jennifer Wright, and a lot of people are very intimidated by cameras today because they look really complex and just hard to use. But really, um, even your old-fashioned film cameras and all the way up to your new fancy digital cameras all essentially use the same process. And to understand that process better, um, a good way to start out if you're deciding to use film as a hobby is to start by learning how to use a pinhole camera. Uh, you can make a pinhole camera out of basically anything. You can make it, I've seen people make one out of an Altoids can all the way up to a VW bus. I mean, anything that you can think of that has an empty space inside of it can be a pinhole. My favorite pinhole camera to use though is a paint can because you have a big empty space on the inside. Uh, light is completely, you know, there's no light leakage that you have to worry about. And, uh, and it's just, it's really easy and it's a lot of fun to use. It's very portable um, and also durable. So uh, how you start your pinhole camera is of course you purchase a paint cam. Uh, I have a lot of luck with these small ones, but uh, you can use whatever size you want. Uh, be creative, it's a process, you know, change, whatever you want. So uh, you start by uh, getting your supplies, obviously. Paint can, spray paint. You have to make sure you get the black, flat, flat spray paint. The flat uh, make, it helps keep the, uh, the light from bouncing around in the camera. and helps you control where the light goes a lot better. You're gonna need magnets to help keep things in place. Uh, a paint can opener is really handy. Uh, scissors for cutting down your paper and a hammer for making sure the lid stays on. Oh, and a drill. So, anyway, you start with your can, you spray paint it black on the inside, and so I'll show you what that looks like. See? You spray paint the top and the inside black, all the places you can find black. Next, uh, you need to drill a hole in your can. So really, you use a sixteenth of an inch bit and you find the dead center of your camera and where am I going to put it? Right about here. And then you gently drill in. It's important to remember that when you drill in um, to your camera to uh, make sure that it's moving on the way in and back out. You want it moving back out because that'll take out all the little metallic bits with it. So to keep light from bouncing around. So you've got your hole. Now you need to learn how to load your camera because this is about it. So you put your magnet in the front and that's your camera. To load it, you need to have a dark room. So basically a place devoid of all light. In the complete darkness, you take your light sensitive paper, which this is not light sensitive paper because we're not in a dark room. You can't film in a dark room. Uh, you take your magnets and you use these to hold the paper in place. And then you put your lid on, tap it, that it's nice and closed, so where no light is getting in. All right, and so you've loaded your camera. And you need to take, uh, to use it, you need to take it outside because outside there's a lot brighter light and it's gonna work a whole lot better. It does not work well on the inside. But you take it outside and you find a, a not moving object. So, like a candle or a lawn ornament or what have you. Uh, you basically set the object in front of the camera and then depending on the light, usually three seconds is a good place to start, but you can do more if, there's, if it's overcast or cloudy and just count one, two, three and close. You take your camera back to your dark room, open it up. And then 
in the absolute darkness of your dark room, you pull out the light sensitive paper and put it into your developing solution, the stop, the fix, and then rinse. And you should have a negative of what you took your picture of. And so that means that it's going to be inverted, it's going to be the opposite, it's kind of like looking in a mirror, and it's also going to be upside down. So, that is how you make a pinhole camera. I hope I have been informative and I've let people know how to make one of these and I hope someone tries it. Thank you for listening.